No trains this week, but we have plenty of concrete to pour. We've got concrete to break out. We've got security barriers going in. We've got to finish the car park. And we've got a new cutting edge going on a bucket. Tip of the spear. I'm Daniel, and this is Astral Weekly, episode 63. Daniel is rolling on the road again. So I'm gonna jump in with Neil and have the guided tour. This piece here was very weak and it had taken a battery. All the pressure was put across the bottom. It's a safe environment, deposit hazardous materials. We like that. I know what that feels like. It's strong enough if I can sit on it. Openings like this will only get bigger. So we're <laughs> Monday morning we're in the yard. Uh, doing a lot of maintenance over here. We're doing some work on the pump and the volumetric concrete lorry here. We're breaking out concrete that has dried on the ore and some of the chutes. Look at our bucket that was nearly dead. We have cut the cutting edge up and we've got a piece here and we've got a piece on either side. Now this piece here was very weak and it had taken a battering. So we've cut that out and we've put a new plate along here and now we're just welding it all together to make it nice and strong. The merch container has its first lick of paint. Oh, we need to do a bit more there and then we need to do the electrics. Let's go and have a look upstairs in the training room. What, so what are you going to do? You're going to put timber and then you're going to attach to the timber. Yeah. These supports that you saw us make a long time ago, we're about to fix these onto the wall. So here's how we've done it. We've taken a piece of 4 by 2 and we've used timber locks and bolted it to the container and then we're bolting this to the 4x2 with timber locks again and that should keep it in place. So by the time we build the wall up all you're going to see is this bit so you won't see any of that by the time we're finished and it should be nice and secure. We're using the big ones at the front and we're using the smaller ones at the back of each desk. The desk should end up being 500 by 700. We've got four there, two here and one teacher's desk going here. On the top level, we have the insulation in already and we have the membrane and the board build up. So we're gonna wait till we've done all of this round here and then we're gonna fit the insulation in between the gaps as well. So, nice. So over here, what we're gonna do now is bring the machine over and begin to push all these barriers into place because we made this brand new car park, but it didn't quite work today. We still have cars spilling out onto the road, which I don't want. So the boys will crack on with this right after they finish what we're doing over here in the new diesel area. We're done over it. Uh, we put the IBCs back up here and we even put the refueling base sign here. It used to be on the back wall previously, but now we've put it on the side. And this area looks good. We had a delivery of diesel, so everything is good to go. And all our pump has electric and it has data communication so we can monitor all the fuel that's being used as well. Went well. Done pouring the concrete here, we're going to do it in sections. So, we're going to do this one today, that one tomorrow, then the day after, the day after, and work our way backwards. We wanted to have separate slabs so they move independently of each other. Car park wall is nearly done, nearly done, nearly done. Car park wall is nearly done, there should be spare ace. I showed you last week about people doing the bootleg Asheville gear. They're at it again. Look, man, let me live. Like, allow me. There's plenty of other brands. I'm telling you to go and bootleg it, and I'm not saying it's okay to do, but there are plenty of other brands out there 
Why have you got a bootleg? My one little jumper, what I made. Why have you got to make bootlegs of it? Stop it immediately. We'll show it up here. What the what these guys are doing. What taking, like, there's not even a word. I should read more books, then I'd have words to describe the disrespect which I've been made to suffer by people doing all this bootleg gear. Stop it. Anyway. I'm going to jump in the car now and head to the city of London. It is 1.22 and I have a meeting at 3. I am definitely going to be late. On the road again. Daniel is rolling on the road again. It's Tuesday morning. I'm not in the yard. I'm on the A1 on the way to Peterborough. I'm going to visit my mate Neil at Mick George. Phil at McGee introduced me to Neil and he come down and had a look at the Asheville yard, had a little walk around, gave me a couple of pointers. And now I'm going to Mick George's yard to see what I can see there. A bit of information sharing. We're not competition. We're in completely different areas. And truth be told, Mick George are about a million times bigger than Asheville. So they're not worried about what Asheville are doing. So I've been invited down. I'm going to have a look around their site, uh, see what I can learn because we know I am learning on the job every day and I believe that experience is the master. In the yard, um, Mikey's going to continue to prepare the area for more concrete and we're going to continue with the work in both the containers. The merch container needs to be finished off with some electrics but we need to attach all of the rest of the brackets in the office. I've missed my turn in fuming. Let's have a look how that's going. there and I've just been no oh, I am no I am actually here I'm not nearly here I am here I've just been told the guys are um, starting to pour some jersey barriers and blocks in the yard because we've used all of our jersey barriers and we're actually short by about six or seven at the moment because we stole them from another area look at that that's some office isn't it oh Mick George let's go in here wow for my car park was big gonna get my gear on Go inside and have a look. Neil showed me around the offices. Their offices are kept separate from where the lorries are. Interesting story, Mick George started 43 years ago and Neil has worked there for 20 years. And when Neil started working there, uh, their turnover and the amount of lorries they had was relatively the same to what Asheville are doing now. Once um, Mick George recruited some people into the business, uh, the business was able to expand to where it is now. And they have over 500 lorries. They showed me around all the offices. I had a look at the system so they can monitor exactly what the business is doing and how it's performing. And they sponsor a football club like Asheville do as well. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> so I had to get a few shots of that for you. So now I'm just following Neil round to the other side and I'm going to take a look there. You saw the Type 1 come in last week. I thought we'd sell it in the same day. So we sold half of it and only a little bit went out yesterday. But today we have an order on and that bay should be complete. I thought we put up a little time lapse to show you what that looks like. Now that the hop up is done and out the way, we are gonna start working on those 40 yard bins that we bought at auction. Click here to watch that video and to see the highs and lows and the emotional and financial strain that was put on me to get a couple of bins. Nearly at Mick George's main site now. So I'm gonna jump in with Neil and have the guided tour. Now this is a lot of bags. Our Mick George have been on this site for 20 years and they're going to be here for many years more so there's about five meters of sand and gravel which has got to come out and then that means that they've got space to backfill with clean inert Woo! what a site how big is this site oh, hundreds of acres hundreds of acres look at all this kit you got here yeah it's our graveyard 
Really? But there's always bits in there that you can find and reuse and cobble together. So we've got 50 metres of clay here, and because we have 50 metres of clay, it actually protects the water beneath. So you've got enough of a void that you can then put asbestos in, so then it will not contaminate water. Clay basically is, uh, is impermeable material, and the positive of this site is there's so much of it here. We engineer the site to make sure everything is contained, all the leachate, all the waste, um, all the gas is contained and um, it's a safe environment to deposit hazardous materials. Look at that. It's only a little one really. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a little one. Little to who? The word little is open to interpretation. <laughs> More material is treated on this site than there is landfilled. Really? So we've got an asbestos picking shed. If you've got asbestos fragments in soil, instead of taking that straight into landfill, mm -hmm. we can put that into the shed and remove the offending articles, the asbestos fragments, from the soil. So then the soil could be reused or it gets used as cover and the asbestos goes into the landfill. Screening process for the soils, fines of the soils, we also wash plant, I believe, this size. So years ago that would have gone to landfill and now it's a sellable product. Yeah, weight wise that is the largest percentage. People are wanting more recycled material these days. So we have a bioremediation facility on the other half of the site over here and it's a natural process that microorganisms um, break down the hydrocarbons in the soil. So oils and diesels and materials like that come in that are contaminating the soil and the microorganisms are added, uh, catalysts are added, foods added, right conditions are kept and the microorganisms break the oils down into a non-hazardous product. I don't know whether our product's as good as yours. <laughs> the beauty of this site is we bring soils in for the spose and we take aggregates out, whether they're recycled or the, the virgin aggregates. So all the lorries run both ways. So basically the lorry leaves here with material for a job and they come back with waste. That always. waste is processed and then they leave again. With always. Lorries don't run empty. Your lorries don't run empty. They don't run empty. Well, yeah, that's giving me a pain. really it's... high. Um, that's giving me a pain in my chest there. The beauty of having concrete thatching plants is that they all need sand and gravel. Yep. So you bring waste in here for deposit or treatment and then it might be that lorry will be going somewhere else to collect some more and it will deposit sand and gravel for the concrete plants, which makes it everything just tick over nicely. That's it from Mick George this morning. Heading back down, sat nerv says I'll be an hour and 45 minutes. Very inspirational coming somewhere like this to see like an independent company that isn't one of the majors grow to something of this size in 43 years and to see what some of the guys here have achieved after being here for 20 years. Very inspirational and food for thought. Security barriers look like they're going in. That concrete looks nice. Not connected yet. Tight. What we do? <laughs> we like that. With the concrete in this area now dry, we have put the security barriers in their final place. We've also cut these. Unfortunately, I can't show you working now because we've turned this off. But the up and down buttons for now are gonna be manually on this side and both the controls for this one and that one are right here. So until we have a full-time security guard, what we're probably gonna do is leave them up all day and the last person to leave at night, always me, will be the one to put them down at the end of the night. It's a step in the right direction. Um, and when we do have a full-time security guard, we'll have the pedestrian barrier here, the yellow one you see between the car park and the pedestrian walkway area. And somebody can come out of here and they can ask any questions they need to ask and then they can open or close the barriers. And there is a lorry going pod. Use this for a great transition. Having a look at the back doors on this bin, if you remember previously, I told you that this hinge was gone. Well, what's happened is since we've been using the bin, because there was no hinge here, all the pressure was put across the bottom and it damaged the hinge on the other side, which is here. So now we don't have a hinge at the bottom, but what we've done is take a 25 mil plate and we've cut this out and we've made these. And we can now use the four of them to replace that side and that side. Then we're gonna work our way through the bin and fix all the little bits and then we're gonna spray it black.
Brackets are in place for our desk. Some plasterboard is on the wall. Here's a test of strength. <laughs> Strong enough, if I can sit on it. I think this has worked out quite well. We're gonna put a piece of 25 mil MDF on top of it. The desks aren't huge, but um, somebody will be here with either a laptop or just a notepad, and they'll be doing a lot of their learning from looking at the screen or listening to the teacher at the front. So coming along nicely. Wednesday morning, and I'm on the road again. Daniel is rolling on the road again. I'm not going to the yard, I'm going to look at a job, a basement job. A good few years back, probably maybe, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago, there was a basement we completed in South London, and a very nice family, got on really well with them, stayed in touch, touch base every now and then, did a little bit more work afterwards. Their family who live in the local area, They've now uh, contacted us and said they'd like to do the same with their basement. It's a little bit different because they have an existing basement already, but they have absolutely no head height. These are these mid-terrace houses in South London. They're all roughly the same size and width. So we're gonna have to dig down, uh, we're gonna have to underpin, we're gonna have to waterproof and make a usable space down there. The best form of advertising is recommendation. Somebody who knows that you're tried and tested, like they know that we did a job for their family like eight to 10 years ago, and they know the basement is still watertight, and they know the value that it put um, on the person's house as well. So we love a recommendation. After that, I'm heading straight to another job. We've been instructed to do the existing and proposed plans. Now we don't need planning permission, but we're having a complete internal renovation. So there's gonna be a lot of steel work because there's gonna be a lot of open plan areas on the ground floor. We're gonna show the client the plan, see if they approve. If they do approve, then what we need to do is get a structural engineer to look at these plans. So we're gonna to have to dig a couple of test pits and they're gonna work out how we are gonna work this wizardry with these open spaces on this ground floor and first floor. Then, after all of that, I need to get myself into the yard. We have concrete to pour. We have one lorry in J Radford being sprayed. Brand. The other four volumetrics, they're all out on the road, flat out busy. So the boys have prepared um, to pour some concrete for this morning, but they can't do it because we've got to go out and do the paid work first. So the boys are going to try and prepare another area. So hopefully at the end of the day, the concrete lorries can pour two areas, but we don't know if that's going to work. We'll see how we get on. On another note, I want to talk to everyone about the Asheville merch on thisisashville.com. The first thing I want to do is apologize. I want to say that I'm ashamed of what's happened. The fact that some of you haven't got your orders yet and you ordered on the 1st of December and some of you have received your mugs broken. Now there are no excuses, no one wants to hear excuses. All I will say is, as I said before, we just weren't prepared for this. Some of the emails I've seen that people have sent in, uh, there was one gentleman who wanted to wear the hoodie for um, a party he was going to and it didn't arrive in time. I know what that feels like. You might have stuff going on, in your life and you plan to go to this event wearing something in particular you know it, it helps that stuff like this helps you know it even helps um with your mind state your mental state and his hoodie didn't arrive in time and he said he didn't even complain he just said it didn't arrive in time i'm upset but will it come before christmas i'm ashamed man that people will be saying things like that the process i was involved in it creating everything but the process after that I didn't put enough thought and time into it. I worked with my team, but nobody was prepared. And I'm gonna be honest, none of us have covered ourselves in glory. I think it's terrible what we've done. I'm completely ashamed. And now we're in a mode of damage control. You'll see on the site, it says we're sold out of hoodies. We are not sold out of hoodies. We've sold about 60% of the hoodies, but we've taken the rest off the site so we can deal with the orders that people have placed already and try to get them out to you before Christmas. Like, it's an absolute mess. Terry's on the phone trying to sort lorries out and people are calling the office out of frustration. And I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry, man. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm trying to do my best, but in future, 
things will be different if we decide to do another batch of merch like the mugs will be packaged different from their source we'll definitely order more water bottles because they sold out really quickly we'll have more instructions on how to care for products and we will have better mechanisms in place because now we understand a little bit more about the merchandising world i don't want to go on about it and you keep hearing me say sorry because i'm turning into that guy who's always sorry and i'm not that guy but I feel that I owe you that explanation because you've taken your hard-earned money and you spent it on Asheville merch and you watch all the videos. So I'm sorry, man, and I'm, I'm gonna rectify it. I actually spoke to um, Ara last night on the phone and I said, Ara, if this goes horribly wrong, the three days before Christmas, I'm delivering what's left myself. And he was like, pack it in, don't be silly. How are you gonna drive up and down the country? And then I started looking at a couple of dresses. I was like, all right, that's a bad idea. I can't make that happen. So that is the lengths that we're gonna to go to to try and resolve this. So please bear with us. And this is not about money. Money has gone out the window. It's all about resolving it so people are happy and people are still happy with Asheville and you still trust and believe in what we're doing and what we say. So bear with us, we'll get it done. Every time I'm on the King's Road, it reminds me of when we had a shop at number 541. We used to have an area where we used to sit clients down, show them their existing and then their proposed plans. We used to specify their kitchens, bathrooms, um, their taps, their tiles. We've come a long way since then and the business has kind of changed direction. In 2013, when we started with a grab lorry, the business kind of veered off in a different direction and we began to concentrate more on the trucks and the aggregates and stuff like that. That wasn't what I planned when I, when I started out. I just wanted to build great houses if you would have told me then that i would be where i am now i would have said no nah, no nah, that's not possible so i think that's something to be thankful for reflecting back on where i was and how i used to do things and where we are now and what we're doing but i'm also trying to think am i happier now or was i happier then i had the same amount on my plate but then i was doing it because i wanted to do it as opposed to now sometimes i'm doing things because i have to do it and the stakes are a lot higher. If you make a mistake at that level, it's all right, you can sort it out. You make a mistake at this level, crippling things can happen to you and your business. So, food for thought. Every time I'm on Kings Road, I think about it. Number 541 Kings Road, the Asheville Construction Showroom. Right, so David and I, an architect, have had a look at the basement. We're going to begin to put a plan in place, but it's a grade two listed building, so these things can be a bit tricky. But luckily, someone on the street is doing what they want to do at this house, and they have set a precedent. So we're going to go on the planning portal, we're going to get their plans, we're going to have a look at that, and David is already starting a spreadsheet of how we're going to cost this. Somewhere like this, you need a license for the conveyor, a license for the hoarding, you need to suspend the parking bay, and you need a skip and there's a number of other little things that can trip you up when you're pricing a job like this. So Dave is gonna begin now to put it all together. And in this area, uh, unfortunately, things are a bit different. Generally, when we create plans for someone, we try to get it approved by the council, and then we do the structural plans later, just in case anything changes. Um, but around here, they want the structural plans, traffic management plan, everything done at the start before they'll even look at it. So uh, this could be an expensive and lengthy process for this client, but in an area like this is cheaper to improve not move so it's a lot cheaper to put a basement under your house here than to sell it and try and buy a bigger one so let's let the process commence david's heading back there you heading back to the yard no, absolutely now straight away yeah so yeah. david's heading back to the yard and i'm gonna go and look at this other job in half a mile turn left onto clapham common in the yard again daniel is back in the yard again and the material has run out do you want to have material yes you do uh, do you want to sell it? Yes, you do. Do you want to be stuck with loads of stock that you're not selling? No, you don't. What's too much material? What's not enough of a stockpile? That definitely isn't enough of a stockpile. And now I don't think we're going to have any trains until the first week of January. Ah, these first world problems. The slab is dry. And we're ready to pour this one. We were pouring four meters at a time, but with this one, we're going to pour six meters. Um, we're only putting the reinforcement here truth be told i don't want to buy any more and the concrete as you can see by the side here the slab is very thick so we're going to put it here because that's where most of the traffic is and over here the bagging system's just going to sit on top of it it's not going to move around so hopefully 
this will be relatively strong. If this isn't strong, then nothing will stay together because the sub base underneath is pretty solid, but we still do have quite a bit more concrete to pour down here. Can't wait for this third pour to start. I think the concrete lorries were flat out busy today and they will be back about half two, three o'clock and we'll pour this, then we'll prepare for another one tomorrow. Uh, the security um, barriers I showed you yesterday, Michael reckons that before it was dry, I pulled it out the ground. I did not pull it out the ground, but now he said that because of the work he's got to do, he's had to pull it out and do it again. So let's have a look at the work that happened underneath the security barrier. And now over here, if you remember, there was a pipe that went from this fence and it went over to here to fill the reservoir when the reservoir was low. But as this is now our safe walkway, we had to disconnect everything and we ran the pipe under the ground. So now this is a safe way to walk and no one's gonna hit their head off the water pipe as they walk past here. It's never gonna hurt anyone walking past the water pipe like that, but we want the pedestrian walkway completely clear of obstructions. In the merch container, we are now beginning to put the electrical trunk in the wall. We're gonna give ourselves as many sockets as possible going around and data in Cat5. This is fantastic, the fact that we're finally finishing the merch container, but the merch is no longer here. Fantastic the way we worked that. Don't you think it's, it's sorcery the way we did that? Uh, that banging you can hear outside is the work continuing on the 40 yard bin. In the training room, we have been taping the joints and filling and sanding, and then start to give this a base coat. Just been told that the concrete lorries aren't in fact coming back till about five o'clock, and then they are empty, so they would have to load. But then they all have jobs at eight o'clock. So if they do load up and pour here, then they're gonna to have to load again, and then they have to wash out. So those boys won't be finished till six or seven o'clock. So it turns out that there will be no concrete pour today. And it turns out there'll be no concrete pour tomorrow because the concrete lorries are out busy. Which means that the slabs will not be finished being poured this week. And now that we've dissected that area up to pour, ah, it just means that the area is now unusable. I can't bother, isn't it? Thursday morning and it's 6.11, we're heading to the yard. We didn't pour the concrete last night because the concrete lorries were too busy, but we've got in early this morning to do the concrete pour that was prepared. And once we've done that, we're gonna try and do another one. Hopefully pour that at the end of the day and then the gap that's left in the middle, uh, we'll pour that one tomorrow. So try and get everything done this week. That's the plan anyway, let's see how we get on. Just having a conversation there's a new driver uh, that started a couple of weeks ago and the boys are on a job a lot of the boys are doing five loads a day but there's a new guy and every day he's doing six loads a day so he's showing it can be done but we're not saying anything to the other guys the new driver was talking to terry and another driver drove alongside the cab and said what is wrong with you slow down so we investigated the matter and the new driver isn't driving unsafely. Uh, one of the other drivers was telling him to slow down
because he's making them look bad so they can do less work every day. Now, what is wrong with people? Even if you stay out a little bit later, you get paid. You're not doing it for free. Like, how do you even address something like that? You've got to think about it here. You tell someone to hurry up and do more loads and something happens on the road, well, is it your fault because you told them to go faster? You have to let people drive at the speed at which they're comfortable with so they can remain safe on the road. But they're telling him to go slower so they can do less work when they know they can do more. And this is across the board and you have to try to manage that and get the best out of people. So it's just like, anyway, I'm glad to see the concrete's going along well. Um, we'll be finished this soon. These concrete lorries need to load and get out and do some work. Then we'll try and do the area over here. And that block up there is still missing. I think it's 11 times I have asked someone to put that block there and finish it. Just for me. I know it's not a big deal, but just for me. It makes me feel a bit better. Just put the block there. No, nobody wants to do it. Ah. Anyway, we continue. Now 7.30, boys have started pouring a slab early. We're very busy with the concrete, but one of the jobs didn't start till nine o'clock. So rather than going to the job and sitting down, decided to utilize the time early. We've got the boys from the build company in at 6.30, and we started pouring this slab behind us. We're on the second load now, probably got another half a load to go after him. Um, but yeah, then that should be the third slab poured in what will be the new bagging area. Need to do a little bit of work in the Weybridge. Uh, I'm gonna tell you more in the coming weeks about something we're doing with one of the majors. But because of this deal, we need to put another Weybridge system in here that's completely separate from ours that they can dial into at any time and we can see what they require from us. Now we've taken up all this space already with our stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replicate this again. I'm gonna take one of these and I'll put it in this corner, remove all of this shelving. So basically when you sit here, you can turn to use our system and then you can turn to use their system. I'm going to chop this table down so there's still a little bit of area where you can sit and get your legs underneath. And then because I've taken down the shelving here, I'm going to build some shelving here because from what I can see, uh, Simon checked this earlier, you can fit two rows of folders here. But this work actually takes precedence over the merch container and the training room. So we actually need to start this right away because I want to hit the ground running in January. To get to the way bridge, you see the safe pedestrian walkway we did on the other side. Now we need to continue that over here. So when you leave the way bridge, we have all flat ground and we are now pouring Jersey barriers every day. Now what we're going to do first, we're going to close off the yard here. Once we've closed that off, then we're going to put a second row of Jersey barriers. So we're going to put it along here. So we're going to give you a meter to walk here and we're going to clean all of this out. And that is going to be an L shape that is going to go across that wall as well. And if you see the blocks that we've got on the outside holding it up, we're going to remove those and put a steel there. So when you leave the way bridge, you can now walk safely from here to that point over there. I was walking back over to do a watch for episode 62 and I was walking past the 926, which is getting serviced at the moment. And I had a look at the fuel filter. Now this is a problem. Uh, there's a problem with diesel at the moment. There's a parasite that sits inside it. And I, I believe there's a solution that we can try to pour in the tank to stop it. But this is a problem. Like this looks awful. I'm surprised this machine is still going with that amount of whatever you call that in there, that amount of parasite or that amount of, I don't know what it is, but it's something that we need to address. That's not good at all. I am told if we leave this sitting out for a couple of weeks, it begins to grow and expand. Now, I don't want to jump to any conclusions. I'm prepared for the zombie apocalypse. I am not prepared 
for aliens coming out the ground and taking over machines and growing bigger and bigger. I am not prepared for this. I don't even have my Hummer yet. Like I said, I don't want to jump to conclusions, but this could be it. I think we need to find out what this solution is so we can pour it in the diesel tank so we can nip this in the bud before it progresses and takes over all machines. Simon is going to turn on all the lights in this yard. Boom. We should be illuminated any second. But I can see down here we are pouring concrete for the second time so we have caught up and that final block is in place. Yes, the final block is in place. I will now sleep at night. Let's go and check on this concrete pour. Simon, what's going on with these lights? And as you can see, these lads are carry carrying over bits to the way bridge. Because here, work happens immediately. Check on the concrete pour. And the 926 service is done. And we have got those parasites out of the diesel. Well done. Two pours in a day. Well done. Well, this was poured a couple of hours ago. I'm not going to walk on it. I'm not the lightest, but I believe... This is good quality concrete, so I think this is off. I think we could walk on this already, really. Yeah. Famous last words. Yeah. It's dry. Hey. Really happy with that, that the guys managed to get the second one done today, which means we only have two sections in the middle to do. We'll split this in half. We'll do this one first tomorrow, and if we get lucky, then we'll do that one there. If not, that'll be Saturday. Then all the gaps where it meets up against the material, we'll just fill in those with a bit of hardcore, and then we'll take the hoppers and move the hoppers in place and measure up for the conveyor belts. Nice. We've got one of the other volleys down here ready to pour as well. Mikey, I've got another one here waiting. It will be empty in a second. So. Yeah, okay. Good. Back in a minute. It's a good start, isn't it? My plan is working perfectly. On this side, a waybridge system, waybridge system. This side, other waybridge system, other waybridge system. I like it. You can spin from side to side. Still got the section to sit here. Everything's been removed. Storage down there. Nice. We continued the entire day with the 40 yard bin as well, but it has now got dark. The grey skies of London have turned a kind of dark navy purple. But that doesn't matter, because we have the new light outside the workshop. Aha! Aha! Standing in the bin, using the new outdoor light. Openings like this will only get bigger. So <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry! Openings like this will only get bigger. So we have put patches on, and this is a fine job, and I'm gonna get out of this bin, because the things that people are saying in here, we'd have to cut out the video. So, I'm gonna leave here. The man with no name and no face is saying things he shouldn't. Goodbye. <laughs> Earlier in the week, you saw Michael try and blame me and said that I moved the security barriers uh, before it had set. Well, he was just winding me up, it's not true. So we've made a bigger slab underneath them. We're gonna drill some holes, we're gonna put some resin in and use really long bolts, and that should secure those. Let's get that cracking now.
lino flooring has arrived for the training room and the merch container so we're just going to pull all the bits out of there lay this down and we'll have the upstand all around so when somebody wants to mop it it's nice and easy and get it nice and clean very quickly over here the lovely new desk is being painted in the Weybridge. You see the boys are working really fast on that. And over here, we continue with the servicing of the loading shovel. Let's go and have a look at this concrete pour. So we poured this slab last night, we're putting down some ply so we can reverse onto it. But when we went to move the blocks over there, this clearly wasn't dry enough yet. And the 26 tonner took a chunk out of it. Oh man, I wish I knew a man with a couple of concrete lorries who could uh, fill that in and pour the rest of the slab. Oh, wait a minute. I do. Let's crack on. How else we could... Sat down in the yard. I'm still sat in my car. I haven't got out yet. I'm contemplating life. A um, couple of things we've got to do in the yard today. One is the final concrete pour. That area should now be done. We continue with the merch container in the office. Hopefully today we'll put down the floors in one of them. Got a few more bits to do in the way bridge. Hopefully that's also finished today. Yesterday everything was drying. And then we're just generally preparing for Monday. Now, um, this evening I'm heading up to Manchester for the Derek Trezora fight. Jan and I were meant to go, but Jan's not feeling well, unfortunately. Opie gets better soon. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna head up there with some of my other mates and hopefully want a victory for Derek and hopefully gives me one of his gloves so I can put it in my office right above the Dan Aziz one. Ah, let's get to it. Are you rolling or not? I'm rolling. Nah, this is jokes. I was about to get out of the car and I looked at Wilson and I said, right, bro, whose jacket are you wearing? He says, mine. I said, bro, that is not your jacket. Uh, Will is in the yard looking like Kenny from South Park with some <laughs> jacket that's too... Nah, give me the camera. Give me the camera. That's jokes. <laughs> I think it fits. Hold on. Nah, I don't, I don't know if that does fit. Nah, that's... Look, I think it fits like a glove. It fits like a glove? Like a glove. Uh, like a glove, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure, but boy. Anyway, but are you warm, Wilson? Yes, very. Warm. If you are warm, that is the important thing. Exactly. <laughs> That's jokes. That's looking like Kenny from South Park. I'm glad the training room's going to be done soon. We have a lot of work next year, which is going to be haulage, and the companies we're going to be doing it for. Um, all our drivers need to have their NPQC card. NPQC, I think that's what it is. I've already contacted some companies, but the trouble is uh, they charge you to teach 20 people at a time and our training room only fits six. So that is not very cost effective for us. And I want to do it on Saturdays, six one Saturday, six the other Saturday, and we can get through all the drivers in the period of five weeks or six weeks or whatever it takes. 
but it's going to be very expensive if we do it like that and truth be told we can't afford it. We need to find someone who will charge us a reasonable rate to come here and teach six people at a time and it also goes towards the driver's CPC. It counts as seven hours. We need to get on that straight away because hopefully next year will be a busy year. I've spent the last two to three years infrastructure spending, 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 spending. All the money that comes in, we spend it, we spend it because we have to be ready for what's going to happen and we have to be in a position and have the necessary infrastructure to deliver when things kick off properly. Now's the time. It's now or never. So let's do this. Very nice. Very nice. So got time lapse wheel. So we've done well in here in just a couple of hours. We have our new desk, system, system, system. Turn around here, system, system, system. We have all our new shelving here and we have a new much smaller desk. I'd say Simon, the accountant, will be relatively happy with this. Good job, lads. The area is now concreted. We're just having a little clean up. We're gonna let the last section dry. <sighs> slowly, slowly, we're getting there. Just doing a little bit of greasing. Gonna do all the grab buckets and cranes, um, the actual uh, drive line and chassis of the lorries um, ha has an auto greasing system on it, so we're not. Kevin, uh, hopefully he's putting it in PTO. Sorry, I thought he was about to try and move the lorry while the legs were down. My fault. Maintenance Saturdays. Now you know I watch a lot of movies. Now it's either there's no wind at all, or we are in the eye of a gigantic storm. There's probably just no wind at the moment. But all things are possible at Asheville. The barriers are in place and they have been tightened somewhat, but not fully. So we thought we'd let it dry a bit further and now we're gonna open them up and tighten them a bit more and that should hold it in place. I know if I push this thing and it moves, they're now gonna blame me again like they did last time. Just Much better. Very nice. Did it show me? Go on. <laughs> what are you going to do? Cut it? Yeah. Well, we cut it once. So let me just cut this one. So they mm -hmm. five centimeters, like both in the middle. Mm -hmm. And you're going to tighten the other one, yeah? Yes. And you're going to put two bolts here so it stays. Cannot, we cannot do any better, yeah? It's four bolts. I thought you tightened. You were going to tighten it again. This one we tightened yesterday. Mm. We're going to this one now. Right. Maybe for another. Let's leave the gap, yeah? Like mm -hmm. to 10 meters. I just remembered it's all gone all the way through the week and I still haven't done anything about aggregatesupplier.com. Ah, so much to do, so many tabs open. Everything 90% done, nothing 100% done apart from the Weybridge. No, but then the Weybridge isn't done because the, the equipment still needs to come here and be set up and people still need to be trained. So, ah, oh, it's a lot going on. I ain't got all day. <laughs> Yeah, leave them both up like that. That's the trouble with these construction and utility companies. They're always holding up the road and not letting um, us decent folk, us normal pedestrians and people going about our business, us civilians, always in the way, never letting us get to our destination in time. Come on, Mikey. No matter what, you'll leave them up, yeah? Yes. Now I need to disconnect this one. Final round. 
And that's it for Asheville Weekly, episode 63. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see an Asheville video that you may not have seen before. And click here for last week's episode, which was number 62. It's nearly Christmas.